Hello and welcome to Darius Comic School and today we will check out if we can do uh, Rock and Roll Vampire Hunters 22 pages um, as a comic if we can put it together and this was the original idea as you can see Rock and Roll Vampire Hunters and these teams are a band and they drive around in their car somewhere in Mexico and hunt vampires. That was the idea, but the idea uh, changed a bit. Well, it didn't change a bit. I will show you what I have here and what I will show you today. Um, I was trying to put together um, a 22 page comic. Um, please tell me down below how many pages does a US American comic have? Because as you can see, I was putting together um, the layouts here we have page one, page two, four, five, and as you can see, it goes on um, to page 22. But does it have 24 pages of actual art? Um, and then if you wanna write a real story, and I will tell you, like this is kinda, um, I will show you what I have done, and it is a success, but it is also a failure because, um, I take my time drawing um, and plotting a story together. As you can see here, I was plotting out the story uh, very fast and I will guide you through this and it might give you um, the insights you need or maybe it will get you going so you lose the fear of drawing uh, and making a comic. But at the same time, I will give you uh, a lot of knowledge and um, yeah the first one is um, doing a 22 page comic or a full comic um, well even even for a pro maybe if you're Jack Kirby you can turn out one in a weekend but it is work <laughs> and you don't want the work to be subpar or to be meaningless Otherwise, it's just like um, a practice and it's okay for a practice. But I will show you in a minute what I turned or churned out for the practice. Um, and if you want to write a bit more better stuff, a bit more sophisticated and you need some books to start with, just get one of these books and stick to one. I got both and I read both to half and that's that's kind of a problem of um, not really analysis paralysis it's more you get something and you try to understand what's written there and then you put it into practice and that takes a bit like you cannot work out on two workout plans pick one stick to stick to that workout plan hit the gym three times a week or four times a week with that training plan and then after a while switch it up if you can see okay my shoulders need more love my arms need more love i i need uh, more leg days or something like this and the same it's also for comics that you need to see what do you like how do you work the best um what are your topics i was reading where is it I was reading a comic um, an hour ago. Let me grab it. And this comic was... It looks kind of good. It's called Scout. And I think it's uh, somewhere in the American wastelands. And this is a Scout, I guess. Um, and there is a music band and they play and um, we'll come to the interesting part in a second and they give a concert and although I love guitar although I love music very very much um, this part of the comic where uh, we have the Clint Eastwood cameo and where people are talking about contracts and music was the least fun part it was like really I skipped it. I rarely skip something in a comic or skip the comic altogether, but I skipped that part. And the most exciting part was this part. We are in Moscow. Some evil guys are plotting something very evil. 
Um, there is this dream of a guy here. Um, he dreams from from something very, very ancient. And um, they bring him armor and they, they call him different um, hero names. And maybe he reincarnated in all of those. And then he wakes up somewhere in a, a military facility. And this really got me pumped and I was thinking to myself okay what gets you pumped and the answer is this <laughs> and um, maybe comics are made for adventures spectacle I don't know at least I'm I'm a guy I'm a boy um, I love seeing guitars and cool babes but really nothing happened there and just seeing this artwork here and some evil guys plotting evil stuff and the hero um, sleeping and gearing up and saying like, um, um, I, w I willed it. The coming days will be very difficult. The darkness is strong. I will be stronger. And <laughs> this is really what uh, got my juices flowing, yeah. Maybe this should be the thumbnail, something like this. Something exciting, because nobody's going to click on it. So let me show you what I did. And this will um, correlate to what I did. So I was thinking the following. Um, I, did, I said, doing comics is like going to the gym. You just need a routine. I think... I was right, but maybe I was also kind of wrong. Depends. It depends on what you are. So uh, yesterday I was watching Quentin Tarantino and on Netflix it was called Django Django. And the good thing was like they, they talk about movies and they talk about revenge and they talk about what the masses want and they interview some Italian youngsters in the 70s and 80s and they said we want to say we want to see blood we want to see fighting we want to see shooting and i think i want that too i mean the past 20 years have kind of been like woke and um i don't have to see like i'm happy when people are uh, safe and they're well off but i do love some uh, sylvester stallone's some battles, some epic things going down, uh, like people fighting tyranny, people fighting bad guys. I want to see that. That gets my blood pumping. And so um, I can recommend this Django Django Netflix. It goes an hour and it talks about the bad guys and um, the process and how they made mov movies, uh, Quentin Tarantino as well as Sergio Corbucci and also like the camera guys and really insightful. And then at the same time I was watching something uh, Rob Liefeld and uh, um, it was a video and the video was the Kurt Cobain of comics and then you see here Rob Liefeld and you click on it and the great thing was that um, Rob Liefeld like he came up as a 20 something and he was self-taught and I know I think that he wanted to do comics, but also he saw like, man, if I can get paid doing this, um, I can help out my family. And I think his father was having cancer. So he really stepped up and uh, protected and provided for his family. And he also pushed a bit the boundaries of what was possible in comics, at least in his head. He was really enthusiastic about creating comics and doing fun and cool stuff i'm but i'm not really like um i'm a generation later i'm not rob liefeld i'm like andy kubert adam kubert joe mad stuff like that but i might look into it and what he always brought was the excitement um, storytelling over anatomy and excitement tops excitement and energy tops maybe Alex Ross or something like that. Without like, I mean, I, I, I like great art. I like also the Alex Ross art. And um, I just like it. But I, what I truly love is stuff like this. This is not the best anatomy, but the story in here, the mood, um, the energy, 
the action, the stuff that goes down in this comic, like this makes my blood pump flow. Um, this is where I get really excited. And yeah, it depends on the readership, but also uh, what you are as a creator. And so I was thinking, uh, can I have some gun gunslinging vampire hunters? Would be cool. I have seen um, John Carpenter's vampire and there they are a bit more sophisticated. They turn up with a van with different cars. Uh, they go in with some special weapons, not just with an M16 and a Gatling uh, or Mac 10s and then they slay the vampires. But I was thinking, man, if I, if I would love just excitement and energy, I would uh, love to see a guy like Marv getting a, a Gatling gun out and um, an X stripper with an M16 and some people with Mac 10s fighting vampires. Just just for myself, this is what I really wanted to see. And so I started the process, I was thinking, can I put together, um, can I put together a story for you guys so that you could see how to do it? And, um, or not just a story, a blueprint, um, or how to do the things. And I was thinking, okay, this is my comic. If you wanted to, you could like put in here all the pages I uh, you want or I have, and then just um, fix it here. I don't know how to call it, paper clips. No, um, but you know what I mean. Like um, fix it here, and then you have a cool comic. Um, but you can also you can also do it. When I do layouts layouts, usually you can see like. Um, I do something like this. What is it? There are a couple of uh, of pages. This was a bit more um, well, <laughs> a bit of a funny comic. As you can see, um, I was putting in a lot of stuff, and as you can see, very th rough thumbnails. And um, here you can see how your page tur uh, turn works and as you can see here I did didn't write anything but I have this also on Diablero and yeah this is how I lay out my story so you can use what you want to lay it out but and this is the big but um, I wanted to show you speed and this is speed like just putting on the paper an idea um, just to get the juices flow is and flowing as you can see this would be the rock and roll vampire hunters um, you see a vampire in the back a moon some Mexican landscape fast cars beautiful babes and you already know and then the, on the back side check out the next issue and then as you open it up it would be like this you of course can draw on this but uh, yeah I didn't want to do that then. You have your intro, intro page, uh, Awesome and Aware presents Rock and Roll Vampire Stories, Pencils, Ink, Colors, written and directed by Derry Donato. Something here and then here you have your outro panel and the next issue. And between this is like your sequential art right here. And let me show you, um, this came later then, but if you wanted to do it like here you could have like your page one and you could lay out something on this or you could write something on this. And this is also the question, do you write first or do you lay out? How do you get your story beats? I think that's different for everybody. Um, I think the way my, my stories come together is more like this. I have some scenes in my mind, I sketch those scenes out I have something like this I know this is my first page then this might happen and then something like this might happen and I switch around I, it's kind of like I'm 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 molding clay something like this other people other people probably have a different approach where um, 
they might have a synopsis or they write it down they say uh, chapter one or the first couple pages this happens uh, a young guy a young musician uh, gets into a bar then this happens then this happens then this happens that is not my process i don't write it down but it might be different for everybody else so let me show you what i was doing um, because I thought I could show you something and it would be valuable, but it kind of failed. And in that failure, I hope uh, we learn something. So this is just an A4 and I was thinking, okay, this is my first page. And we see a, ca a car and it's driving down. Um, it's s somewhere sunset, uh, some text boxes, a young mus musician heading towards town. And then we have page two, page three. Um, I was thinking maybe I can uh, write the story on the pages and I put down images and text bubbles. Um, let's see, we, we would take maybe a blue pencil and maybe I would know on page two this happens or maybe page two and three is a splash page where we see here the car and here's the guy and here he passes something and here's a turtle and then right here he sees something in his um, in his um, back mirror or something like this and he looks into it and we see some eyes you know what I mean and then some text bubble some inner monologue and then we go to the next page but I was drawing this out or creating the layouts and as you can see once you see uh, how much story you have to do and you have just a blank piece of paper and you're trying to fill it this way um, for me at least it got really really hard and it's not the way probably to do it or and, and it's not the way I do it but I just wanted to show you how many how many pages how much space you really got in telling a story in and I mean um, not every page needs six panels you can definitely look um, it's something like Sin City and see man Frank Miller does just four uh, panels and here he does also just four panels so um, and he tells it in a very movie like cine cinematic feel as you can see and he says saves also background he saves um, a lot of things just very economic but here the background is just a beautiful silhouette so um, definitely copy and steal and as you can see only two panels like why not why make it hard on yourself and then look here he, he drifts into black and that's it and here one two three four five six seven seven one two three four five six seven yes and because these are short shots like he wakes up he, he, he feels the pain, he feels his head, he looks up, he sees the tattoo and then he sees, um, yeah, Lucille in, as you can see, Frank Miller, like, you don't have to work that much, but you, I think you cannot start this way, like, you need, you need to um, somehow lay out the story in a different way. And I will show you in a second. I, would, uh, I just want to show you like page 14, 15, 16, 17. Like it's, it's a, lot of, a lot of space to fill with a beautiful story. And should you be afraid now? I think not. Because like uh, this is the big stage. And um, as with a concert or a big game, you should be prepared to hit this white space with everything you have. So my plan to just write and lay out something on these pages didn't work um, and that's good that it didn't because I think um, it's good to write down things to write down your ideas and then to have something like this where you can say okay this is the beginning I this is like my first five minutes of the movie like here I introduce, then um, from here it's the inciting incident. Like these two pages, we're now um, in the, 
in the in the in the first half or act one like this is beginning then this is act one and then by page let's say page 12 13 15 like we're in the middle and so um, you have different beats like you have here an introduction here something needs to happen we need to know what's it about and then here really it starts to I don't know and and that is what you have to figure out and then like you have here the mid part and then maybe you you say okay here um, there has to be maybe some rising tension and then here by the end things escalate big battle or resolution on the final pages and we have not written down anything yet i think this approach is also not the best i think that these panels i showed you a second ago and these panels come after you have done um, a different work and i think the work you should do um, probably is not so much on the pages um, I think the process will happen in your imagination, in your brain. You will think about a plot, um, or maybe if you get a plot, you will think about how do I draw this, how do I do this. So it's not um, a workout on the page. I think, yes, um, once you hit the page, you're kind of working the muscles, but I think it's more of um, creating something, reading something, putting words down, creating a story, seeing what you want to take and then doing it. And I will show you in a second the story I did. And I think that this might be a bad story, but it's okay to show you this one. So do we need a separate video? So yes, let's separate this.